Hello, my fabulous fifth graders. We covered a lot about decimals and fractions last week, and so I wanted to do a recap to help you out in case you missed something or you just needed a refresher and go back over it. This is also a good thing to kind of share with your parents to see how you're learning your um, decimals and fractions. So we're going to start with money models because we love to have concrete things in front of us that we can build upon. Like when you were in first and second grade, you had paper that you cut up into halves or quarters. In um, third and fourth grade, we used our um, blocks or our shape pieces to build fractions or to pull them apart. So this concept, we're using money pieces. And you guys, we start with this because it's something you're familiar with. You know a lot about money. You really do. Let's look at a dollar. What do we know about this dollar? Hmm. Well, it's kind of got this grid behind it, right? Why would they put a grid behind it? How much is in the grid? What do you think for our one whole dollar? Yes, we're matching it with our hundreds grid because this is something that you're really familiar with. We start off with those one pieces, then we trade them in for a 10 stick, and then we bundle the tens and we get our hundreds. You know this. Now, how do we write a hundred or one dollar? It's just one. So you go to our ones place and that's where we put the one. I have zeros after this decimal point. This is to show we have no change. You guys know a lot about money, right? It's all around us. We've seen it before. These um, decimal places show that everything after that is going to be pieces of a dollar. How many? Well, if we trade in one whole dollar and you want a lot of stuff, you can get a hundred pennies, a hundred pennies for this one dollar. That's a lot of counting, right? Individually. How would we write one cent, just one of these, so we could add them up to get to our whole dollar? Well, we have to go all the way over to the hundreds place because it takes a hundred pennies to make one dollar. So we need to have this place value holder in the tens place to show that we have no tens and we have no ones. We only have one penny. So we can write it as a hundred times this one cent will give us one dollar. And that's how we match it up. What about dimes? What do you know about dimes? How many does it take to cover this whole dollar? That's right. It takes 10 of them. How do we write that on our place value chart? We have the zero because we have no ones. We have one tenth. And then you can put the zero here for when we're um, writing money. We always cover that hundreds place um, just to show we have no pennies. If you were writing this in just decimals, you might just write one tenth with zero decimal one. And then we add them up. That is a lot of repeated addition to get to one dollar. What might be an easier way of doing this? Yep, we just multiply. 10 times 1 tenth equals a dollar. All right, look at you guys. Now we're on to nickels. Now we don't generally see this in our number pieces um, in groups of five, but wouldn't it make it so much easier if we did? I love these nickels. Um, it takes how many of them to cover the whole dollar? That's right, it's down below, 20. So how much would one of them be? Hmm. What is a nickel? Let's look at it. If a dime was 10 cents, a nickel is half of that, right? You can see that with the picture, it's five cents. Now, we need to put that place value there just like for our one cent. You could look at this and say, hey, it's like having five pennies. I could trade in one nickel for five pennies. And that, that we know, that'll help us when finding equivalent fractions, hint, hint, for the future. So again, I'm not writing out 0 decimal 0, 5, 20 times so I can add them all together. I'm just going to multiply it. 20 times 5, uh, 5 hundredths equals $1. Gotcha. Okay, now we move on to quarters. We're getting a little bit, we go to more familiar things. We have our, um, how many quarters does it take for $1? It takes four, right? We know this. So how do we write a quarter? Well, zero decimal 25. And this one I can just add four times and get my dollar, or I can multiply it, right? Very familiar with this. This is some good stuff. 
Okay, now we're on to a piece. This one you might never have seen before, but it's a great way for us to segue into fractions, and it really is money. It is a 50 cent piece, and we have two of them here because it takes two 50 cent pieces to equal $1. And so we have our 50 cent plus 50 cents. Got it? Or it could be two times 50 cents. Here we go, moving on to fractions. So we have our one hole here and our one hole here. They look different, right? But they're the same. One, we're talking about money, one, we're just talking about an item. And we could break it up into many different things. You could be talking about cakes or cupcakes or cookies or whatever you really want to cut up into fractions. So again, we start with our pennies. We have a hundred pennies to equal one whole dollar. So we write it as a fraction. It's like we have a hundred out of a hundred. So we still have our whole dollar, which equals one. So if you have the same number on top and the same number on bottom, it will always equal one. It just means you haven't shared it out yet or you have all of it. One of them by themselves is one out of a hundred. If I have 10, then I have 10 out of 100, okay? Now we go on to our tenths, and again, it takes 10 of them to cover up the whole, so we see it's 10 out of 10, right? If we move on to 1 tenth, then you can see it is 1 out of the 10 spaces needed to cover up the whole. Now, what if I had more than one tenth? Well, you could do the same thing. I have five tenths here. And so I covered up how much of the whole? It's five tenths, but what does that look like? Hmm, it looks familiar, right? Ooh, here we go, 50 cent pieces. I have two 50 cent pieces, so I have two out of the two needed to cover up the whole. And if I only have one 50 cent piece, then that will cover up half of the whole, okay? I have one out of the two pieces that look just like my, oh, yep, five tenths. So five tenths and one half are the same value. Good, all right, let's look at quarters now. How many quarters does it take to cover up the whole? Yes, four. Over here to the right, I have four out of four, so I have one whole. But if I only have one of them, then I only have One fourth. I don't know why it's not doing. Okay, so I have one fourth, one out of the four needed to cover it all up. Okay, so now what if I have two of them? Well, then I'll have two fourths, which is equal to one half, right? Good job. That's my two fourths. All right, now I'm down to nickels. Remember, this one's a little confusing because you guys want to say it's one fifth, but it's really not because it takes all of these nickels to cover up the one whole dollar. And that means it takes 20 of them. So if I only have one of them, then I only have one twentieth. Okay. And that's super important. Now, sometimes we'll look at them in groups, right? So instead of just one twentieth, what if I had five twentieths? Hmm, what does that look like? Yeah, if we partition our whole up in, we can easily see that 5 twentieths is equal to 1 fourth. And this is why we use our money to help us with fractions. Okay, now let's do a problem with all this knowledge that we've done. So here we have Joe picked three fourths of the blueberries. His sister picked a one half pound of blueberries. How many pounds did they pick in all? Well, if he picked three-fourths, let me pull out three-fourths, okay? And then if his sister picked half a pound, I can pull out one of these. Well, what do we notice? We notice that we have quarters and 50 cent pieces. Well, I don't want to have 50 quadrilles or whatever combination you want to make because they're not the same thing. I can't add. Fractions are all about finding equal pieces. So I need to convert them into equal pieces. Now I could change this quarter and this quarter in and get a 50 cent piece, but then I have this one fourth, right? Hmm, that might work, 
but another way of doing it is just changing my 50 cent piece into quarters. So I can see that it takes, it's not coming up for me here. I don't know why the bar is not coming up, but I'll just change them. So here, so one quarter, two quarters. Yep, that's the same value. All right, now what I can do, I'll get rid of the 50 cent piece because I swapped it out for my two quarters. I can just move one over here because I'm adding them, right? So now I have a dollar and one fourth. So I have one and one fourth. That's how many pounds they, um, they collected overall. Let's do another problem. We have, um, what if he only picked a quarter or one fourth pound of blueberries and his sister picked five twentieths? Oof. So we have our one quarter, right? And then we have our five twentieths. Where's my twentieths? What do I remember? Oh, so I need to have something that covers this 20 times. Well, that's just a, f that only needs four. What about my 10 sticks? No, what about two 10 sticks? That's 20, right? Wait, no, because that's not covering it 20 times. So those are too big. I need something that's, that's right, it's my nickels. I need 20 of these to cover um, this whole dollar. So get that out of the way and that we can figure out which one we needed. And they said we had five of them, one, two, three, four, five. Let me put them together and I can see Okay, so now that I see that my one fourth is equal to my five twentieths, I want to be able to write it as with the same denominator, right? Because we don't want to mix these um, numbers together. We want our language to be the same. So I want to say that one fourth plus our five twentieths is the same as five twentieths plus five twentieths, which would give us what? Oh, yep, we add the numerator, not the denominator, and give us ten twentieths. or we change our 5 twentieths to 1 half. And um, later on, we'll see why this is equivalent with our number expressions by division, right? 5 divided by 5 equals 1. So if I divide that by 5, then I have my numbers. And then whenever you do the top, you have to do the same thing to the bottom. And we'll get there for this, and then that's one fourth. But you can see it with your visual models that they are both one fourth. And then when we add them together, we have our two fourths, or we have our one half. That would be the same. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Here's your question, so you know um, that I know that you watched this. This coming week, we're going to be doing fractions, but we're going to be looking at clocks. So my question to you is, how many minutes are in one hour? And see me tomorrow, tell me about it. If you don't know, then ask me and we will figure it out together. All right. I hope you had a great weekend.